Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Minister and fellow speakers. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here today on an oft-neglected but vitally important topic. I was first elected, as Donald said, to Limerick County Council in 2004 and to Dáil Éireann in 2007. And over these years, I've had a chance to reflect upon how we do politics in this country and how we can improve things. The McGill Summer School is an ideal forum to test old views and put forward new ideas. Looking back at the writings that inspired this school, the work of Patrick McGill covered a world of social deprivation and struggle, a society of domineering organizations, and the helplessness of the ordinary person. It reminds me of the origins of the philosophy of republicanism and that sustains my own political party of Fianna Fáil. The empowerment of the citizen and ensuring that the kind of powerlessness that Patrick McGill wrote about is a relic of the past that lies at the heart of real republicanism. It is that belief that underpins my own views on local government. One of the central messages conveyed by the people to the entire political class was that they want a change in the way politics works in Ireland. They want us to get Ireland on the road to recovery, but they also demand that we drive on a comprehensive reform. This is a major challenge to us all, especially for a government with an unprecedented majority. The task is to implement changes that directly address the failings in our institutions of state. The public are not asking for a philosophical debate, but a practical approach to radically improve how public life works in Ireland. The government was elected on a promise of sweeping reform. A constitution day to clean out old practices was promised within 12 months. Yet 12 months on, the national parliament debated dogs causing sheep worry in the Cooley Peninsula and then went into a three-week recess rather than discuss the important developments on the 3.1 billion promissory payment. The promised radical reform has not materialized to date. It is time we became serious about reform. The electoral system is not the only factor in the dominant localism of Irish politics. That is what the extremely limited constitutional convention seems to think. I believe the power vacuum in local government that TDs fill is a major factor in the political culture we have today. Addressing this vacuum is key to overhauling Irish politics. Local government in Ireland is a poor relation in the bankrupt family of state political institutions. Current company accepted. It is not a topic that commands widespread interest. So I am glad to have this opportunity to offer a fresh vision for local government and to add to the debate about the forgotten part of the family. Discussion on the topic has been severely limited. Since 1991, I have counted at least 14 reports on local government structures, services, finance and efficiencies but the public debate has been effectively non-existent. How many political commentators and opinion informers, let alone members of the public, have read the local election manifestos of the political parties ever? Contrary to the government's assertions, some progress has been made through better local government, the removal of the ultra virus rule and constitutional recognition. Who would have thought it was Fianna Fáil who would have ended the dual mandate? However, much more radical action needs to be taken. As Edmund Burke put it, to innovate is not to reform. The sweeping changes expected to be announced by the government may not mark a real improvement in Irish local government that will be felt by people across the country. Instead of radical reform, we will have the centralization of power through the mooted abolition of town councils. Rather than moving, closer, rather than moving power closer to the citizen, this will see it become more distant. In place of efficiencies, we will have large, inflexible organisations where size is mistaken for savings. Ireland already has one of the lowest amount of government representatives, local government representatives per capita in Europe and one of the weakest local government structures. The creeping sense of alienation that ordinary people feel towards government will only become worse under knee-jerk reactions being pushed by the government. The decision-making processes that affect our everyday lives, rather than taking place at the level closest to the citizen, will be shifted further away from them. Local democracy and local accountability cannot be sacrificed in the name of efficiency. I will outline what I see as a major vacuum in Irish political life and sketch a set of proposals to create a local government system that will empower the ordinary citizen. 
one that will create an era of transparency and engagement and that will provide a real forum for leadership which separates the local and the national. I wish to focus on the three key themes of democracy, leadership and integrity. Underpinning this vision is the belief that local people are best placed to make local decisions in relation to democracy and community councils. Looking at the theme of democracy, let us start, let us start at the position closest to the citizen. Power should rest at the closest possible level to the citizen. This is a principle enshrined in the Maastricht Treaty and in the Council of Europe's Charter on Local Self-Government, to which Ireland is a signatory. In order to make it a reality, we need to help consolidate and develop the active community council model. Community councils should be given the first role in developing local area plans, deciding where local developments should go and what amenities are needed and, where the, and what their communities should look like. It's basic politics deciding what goes where and when. Putting in place a clear community council structure will develop a strong sense of place rather than an ad hoc framework offers an avenue for engagement for locals to have an ongoing say in their local community is run. These councils should help set the basic local criteria in terms of design for planning, act as a forum for expressing local needs, working in conjunction with residents' associations to help create such organisations as community alert groups, local festivals and tidy town organisations. There is a wellspring of local pride in Ireland, one that we all see in the hard work of the GAA clubs and the tidy towns, which we should use to revitalise communities hit hard by economic difficulties. Much has been said about the future of town councils, which were highlighted in the McCarthy Report and the Local Government Efficiency Review as areas that should be abolished. While there is much that I agree with in the Efficiency Review, I am not convinced that the abolition of town councils is a sound strategic choice. It's ironic that as the 2011 census reveals that the biggest population growth has occurred in towns of over 10,000 people, we are discussing abolishing their main forum of self-governance. Ireland now has 62% of its population in urban areas, and we need to be more imaginative in addressing urban governance rather than a slash-and-burn policy with no thought about its impact. Even under, even under fiscal pressure, we must take a long-term approach to the problems we are facing and how best to address them. Some of you will have followed the Irish Times series on the best places in Ireland to live, where Westport came out on top. I'm sure there are plenty of people here today who have their own ideas on that, but we would all agree that Westport was a worthy winner. One of the main drivers behind the success of Westport has been the hard work and dedication of a non-partisan town council where traditional party rivalries do not dominate in a way that is only possible at this local level. The council views itself as a development agency for the town working to attract tourists, provide amenities and ensure proper development and to create a positive business environment. The councils fought against developers who wanted out-of-town retail centres or to disrupt the un unique architectural fabric of the town. Combined with the hard work of local civic groups like the Tidy Towns, keeping the streets in pristine condition, it has shaped Westport into a well-planned town which it is today. It is, it's an example of what a town council can and should do. This is not a defence of the status quo. Town councils must change and be made to work for people. In order to ensure value for money, rebuild the trust in the public in a political system shaken by the Mahan and Moriarty tribunals and the weaknesses exposed over the past few years, we have to take strong action. It is vital that we cut costs and ensure that self-serving junkets such as conferences and twinning trips are cut out. I believe that the basic payment to town councillors and ad hoc expenses for conferences should be completely eliminated. Any foreign travel should be entirely self-financed and focus solely on economic links and cultural exchanges for students and young people who benefit most from such efforts. To survive, town councils must return to real civic engagement with local people making local decisions. I believe that information technology offers a chance to radically close the gap between officials, representatives and the people they serve. As the Mahan Tribunal pointed out, it is critical that we shine a light on the internal workings of organisations that exist to serve the people. 
A new era of transparency and engagement will shake Irish political culture up in bold new ways. It is a chance to breathe new life into Irish democracy. The 2006 Task Force on Citizenship and more recently the work of We the Citizens shows a real appetite amongst the public for engaging with the political system and taking an active role in decision making. Local people making local decisions should be facilitated by live streaming of all council meetings, open online Q&A forums with councillors and officials, ensuring that planning documentation is freely available online as recommended by Mahan, facilities for lodging complaints and proposing solutions, plebiscides on local issues and participatory in uh, the budgeting process and petitions for actions on specific areas. Progress has already been made in this area through the SOWIT project between researchers in UCC, Trinity College Dublin and Kilkenny County Council. More than just canvassing for locals' opinions, it also forms the basis for producing viable solutions to the problems that local areas face. I hope that this model will be built upon across all local authority areas, utilising our technological capacity to make politics more transparent and open to engagement will, create, will change how we do politics more than any constitutional convention ever could. Now, in relation to leadership, I believe that directly elected mayors represent a chance to introduce real leadership in local authorities, rebalance power away from over-dominant officials and refresh our republic. A central individual provides an opportunity to drive forward an agenda fight for the advancement of the local government needs, heighten the visibility of the local authority, act as a champion for the local area, and broaden engagement with the public and promoting greater accountability. Mayors provide clear lines of accountability and effective leadership so that it is clear to everyone where the buck stops. The unique legitimacy and mandate of mayors combined with the stability of a political term in which mayors cannot be removed from office at the whim of political colleagues can enable bolder and braver choices to be made in a way that divvying up the Cahir League position amongst parties cannot. This means that mayors can take up the challenging role of breaking down the silo effect of the civil service and tackle the issue of local government financing which needs to be developed in tandem with the structural reforms. An outward looking approach is critical if localities are to compete with cities across Europe and globally, a strong champion and ambassador will be the key. Whether it is attracting inward business, invest investment or lobbying for national or European funding, mayors have a vital role to play. For instance, working within the Committee of the Region structure in the EU to secure EU grants or the European Investment Bank funding, a Dublin mayor could help secure additional funding for specific Dublin projects such as revitalising Dublin Bay or utilising Dublin's maritime tradition. The successful, bid, the successful London bid for the 2012 Olympics launched by Ken Livingstone is perhaps the most striking and high profile example of a role a mayor can play in getting a big achievement for their area. There are also a number of international examples of the contribution mayors can make in generating local economic development. In the US, Mayors like Rudy Giuliani's transformation of New York through combating crime with a zero tolerance approach and the leadership in the dark moments of 9-11 stand out as an example of real civic leadership. At the moment, the mayor of Chicago, Ram Emanuel, has just launched a new bold Chicago Infrastructure Trust. This trust aims to finance infrastructure projects by leveraging private capital to fund critical infrastructure projects which would then repay the investors without having to sell off public assets. There are certain ideas suited to certain cities, but they are the kind of ideas that Ireland needs and can promote by showing a bit more imagination in local government. I mentioned earlier the assumption that big is equal to efficient is not always the case. The work of Mark Callanan, Ronan Murphy and Aave Quinlevin and their research paper Is Bigger Better questions that sweeping assumption and begs broader questions about how we approach local government. I think that the innovation and flexibility shown by executive mayors stands in stark contrast to the top-down silo approach of large bureaucracies. It illustrates the findings of the research brief and the potential for local leaders coming up with solutions 
rather than diktats from Dublin. It reflects the great philosopher John Stuart Mill, who was a trenchant supporter of local government as a place where innovation and aspiring politicians could be tested out, failures cast aside, and successes brought forward before going to the national stage where the stakes are much higher. In my view, they should supplant the city manager to become executive mayors with a full-time fixed-term remunerated position. It is important that additional powers are devolved to the local authority in order to ensure that the position is justified as a real gain for the people involved. Starting with Dublin, there is no reason why the other urban centres of Cork, Limerick, Galway and Waterford could not be led by directly elected mayors before moving to implement this model across all counties in the long term. This incremental process should allow for the sharing of best practice between local authorities and the creation of real leadership. In relation to integrity, restoring public trust in the political process is not simply an issue for the Oireachtas. Local government must also be seen to adhere to the highest ethical standards that we expect in our country. Planning corruption at the local council level explored by the Mahan Tribunal has been one of the most corrosive legacies of Irish politics in recent decades. The conviction of former Fine Gael councillor Fred Forsney for corruption shows that problems in the planning system are a cancer that did not stop at the Red Cow roundabout. It was in this light that I have been deeply critical of the downgrading of inquiries into planning irregularities in particular, given the government parties control these local authorities over the past few local elections. Trust in our republic needs more than a whitewash. It needs to be completely built. It is my view a series of steps needs to be taken at local level. Firstly, the rigorous enforcement of rules relating to the corporate donations and lobbying in local government by a specialised section of SIPO. Secondly, the introduction and application of whistleblower legislation to local authorities. Thirdly, the full implementation of, a comp of the comprehensive recommendations of the Mahan Tribunal. The Tribunal came forward with a series of recommendations to underpin the integrity of the local government planning system. I fully support its recommendations. It is vital that councillors are fully trained and equipped to look at the complexity of planning decisions and their own interests in the decisions open to full public scrutiny. An open internet accessible registration of donations and interest by local authority members will enhance transparency over the monetary interest of elected representatives. Stringent auditing systems will need to be put in place and maintained in order to ensure that potential corruption in procurement or other use of public money is avoided. I believe that the role of the controller and auditor general should be extended to cover local authorities. Fianna Fáil published a bill to this effect which was rejected by the government opening up local government to greater financial transparency should be the key to immediate, would be a key to an immediate objective of the government. Accountability and integrity in public life should stretch from the halls of government buildings to the lowest town council chamber, no exceptions. In conclusion, Fianna Fáil is a Republican party and our Republican philosophy rests on the active role of the citizen. A belief in Lincoln's phrase of government by the people, of the people, and for the people. A true republic allows its people to take an engaged, ongoing role in shaping their lives. In local government, this means by, for, and of the community. I believe that reforming local government along the key themes of democracy, leadership, and integrity will help achieve this. It's not just, it will not just restore faith in the political system, it will reinvigorate it, with new blood, fresh thinking and bold solutions to the problems old and new. It's time we change how we do things and let's start with local government. Thank you.